Hello everybody. My name is Pat McDonald. My wife and I get the chance to be the lead pastors here at Word of Life Fellowship. And I have the privilege of hosting this next series here in our Connect Groups. It's going to be called God Questions. You know, we always have a lot of questions for God. I don't know about you, but you know, Lord, what do you want us to do? When do you want us to do it? What's the next job? Is this the right spouse? Is this the right house? Or Lord, why did you make mosquitoes? Well, of course, we all have questions, but this series is going to be a little different spin on that. This is going to be about God's questions to us. You see, God's word is full of questions to we humans. We have questions from God the Father. We have questions from Jesus. There are questions in the Bible from the, the fathers of faith, the ones who wrote, uh, took dictation, and, and brought the Bible to us. And to those of you who out, are out there who have uh, words of prophecy, there are questions that probe you there as well. Uh, and this series is going to be about reaching into those questions, allowing them to probe us and coming up with the answers that God has for us. So the series goals are going to be as this. Number one, to help one another, each of us to become aware that God has questions for us. Number two, to discover many of those questions, to separate the, the really crucial ones from just common questions. And number three, to discuss and to hopefully unpack and get a deeper understanding of what God wants to accomplish with his probing questions. Let me start by, first of all, acknowledging uh, a good friend of mine, perhaps one of my closest friends, mentor, and traveling partner. His name is Pastor Ted Uke from, from Nova Scotia, Halifax, Nova Scotia. In the late nights of travel, we chatted a lot, and one of the, question, one of the topics came up was the questions that God has for us. So I want to acknowledge, Ted, your influence has made a big difference. I want to thank you for this. You know, and we must know straight up front that God's not asking, asking questions to us the same reason and, and the same reason we ask questions. I ask questions to find out information. I ask questions to get uh, direction, to get, receive counsel, insight of things. Well, God doesn't need information. He doesn't need my counsel. He certainly doesn't need direction from me. God's asking questions to us to try to get us thinking about what he has to say to us. Because questions are like intersections in life. They make us think, are we going the right direction? Should we go straight forward? Should we stop? Should we go left or right? Questions spark things in us. And so Today, in this class, we're going to start, I don't know how long the class is going to go. I don't know exactly all the questions we're going to be addressing because there's a, there are hundreds and hundreds of them in the Bible. And there's going to probably be other speakers coming and addressing these things. But we want to talk about this topic because I think God has a great deal to unearth in each and every one of us through the method of asking questions. It's my observation that one of the key elements of relationship, one of the essence of relationship is dialogue. It's interaction. It's my firm belief that our Father in heaven, he understands, of course, he understands everything, but he understands the value of interaction, and it's his desire to have relationship with us, and not just to be barking orders like to slaves or robots. It's his desire to see this interaction occur that the questions and the answers and the, the thought process and the discovery process will bring us to a deeper realm of knowledge of him, of that relationship, and where we're going and what we're going to be doing. I'm not, again, I'm not so sure how far this thing's going to go, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a fun class. Uh, so I want you to, uh, I want you to seatbelt in. I want you to take notes. Um, I, I, I don't intend to address all of the questions that God has asked, is going to ask, but we clearly hope that you'll get the sense of what this class is about so that as you read the scriptures, as you're involved with your devotions, you'll keep a keen eye and ear and heart open for the questions that God is asking. Of course, in the Bible, he's going to be asking it of others mostly, but if he's asking it of others, guess what? He's probably asking it to you and me. So. 
Let's put our seatbelts on. Let's embark in this journey to become more aware of this kind of divine dialogue, its value. Let's embrace it and let's grow with it. The first question, and again, I'm not going to take this chronologically like Genesis to Revelations, but I am going to start in Genesis here. So let's go, let's go immediately to Genesis chapter 3, verse 9. This is the chapter, of course, where God has created the heaven and the earth, then God created man, God partnered with man to literally name all of the wildlife, all the animals and birds and so forth and so on. And then he said he saw that it is not good that man should be alone. He created woman out of man. And now we see chapter three, this experience in the garden. He put placed them in a garden and he set them there so that they would subdue the earth, that they would keep it, propagate, and that they would propagate and multiply and fill the earth. And so then we see the introduction of this being called the serpent. And this dialogue occurs, and, and we know the story, of course, that Satan, or the serpent, got woman. He, de he deceived the woman, and then she ate of the tree, and sin entered into her life. And then she gave of the fruit to her husband, who was with her. So guys, we can't be blaming on the women for all this because they happen to be sitting right there. He was sitting right there with his wife and letting her do this. So the real fault is upon us, I might note. And then it says that they, in, in previous verses there in chapter three, it says that they, they saw that they were naked and they hid themselves because they heard God walking in the cool of the day. And then in verse 9, it says, The Lord called to the man and asked this question. Where are you? Where are you? Again, God's not looking for information. The Lord had not lost Adam. Uh, his goal was really for Adam to see that Adam had gotten lost. What else could this word, this question be? Where are you? You know, one of the other things I find as I'm pondering this, I find it kind of remarkable that this, this amazing creation, man, humanity, that God created and he, he came out perfect. I mean, he was created perfect. He, God partnered with him, like I said a moment ago. God partnered with man to literally name all of creation, right? So this brilliant being, this human being, man, Adam, I marvel at how stupid he got so quickly. I mean, think about it. He's hiding from God. Adam had walked and talked with God in the cool of the day. He knew God better probably than anybody since then, other than Jesus, of course. He obviously knew better than to think he could hide from God. Okay, but he hides from God, so how stupid is that? Okay. But let me ask you a couple questions here. Is God asking us the same question? Where are you? What kind of answer do you think God wants from us? I mean, when he was asking Adam, was he really asking him, where are you? Adam, where are you? I, no, I don't think so. I think God, I'm certain that God knew exactly where Adam was. I think it was more like, all right, the toddler is running from dad. Uh, Adam, uh, where are you? I mean, he knew exactly where he was, right? So the question again wasn't that God had lost Adam. The question was, does Adam know that he's lost? So it brings us to that question to each and every one of us. What is God asking of us when he says, where are you? Is he really looking for a GPS coordinates? Do you really think God needs to have you fill him in as to where you are? Or is God, in fact, I'm not even sure God's looking for a, a verbal response. I'm not sure he's looking for an answer from us. I think he's looking for us to ask ourselves, where, where, are, yeah, where am I? Am I in the right geographical location? Am I in the right job? Am I, am I in the right ministry? Am I in the right church? 
Are we where God wants us to be? Where are we spiritually? Have we, have we really engaged in earnest what God's called us to do, to be? So today I'm gonna to leave this with you. I'm gonna challenge each of you guys as I leave you in this. I want you to discuss this. I want you to ask each and every one, what is God looking from you as an answer to that question, where are you? And next week, we're going to address another question, but discuss this amongst yourself. And I'm looking forward to hearing the outcome. So God bless you guys and talk about this. Discuss it. God says, where are you? We'll see you next week.